Right, so today's planting is in two parts, but that is for a change not because of something I have done, but because of something someone else has done. Uh, but more on that later. But first up today we are planting uh, Dumbea rotundifolia, which is something called a wild pear. This is a native tree, it is not related to true pears, it's in the sort of uh, Malvasi now I think. I don't think it originally was, but it is now. Uh, it's a very vigorous flowering plant, it has a very very pretty sort of white flower that tends to be produced in clusters, which does tend to resemble sort of European pears in flower a little bit, but it isn't going to produce an edible fruit at the end of it. But it is very good for drawing in pollinators, so this is going in an area where I planted not only the original Kigelia africana, which is still somewhat sulking, uh, but a whole bunch of little fruit trees and a little macadamia nut, and it should really draw some pollinators into the area and also add a nice little bit of sort of visual diversity. This isn't a bit I have to walk past every day because it's on the way to the sort of water pump, so it should be quite uh, a nice sight when it's in flower because of that. We don't really need a marker plant because it is quite big, but we are going to be putting a couple of companion plants in the shape of an Aloniariensis, I think, uh, which is pre-rooted, so it should cope quite well with how watered this is going to get. And then secondly, a piece of the Senecio de Carian. Between those, they should form a nice succulent sort of fireproof thicket around the base of this, but also a nice sort of uh, prevention of drying out. And as we mentioned yesterday in the sort of magnolia planting, it should also reduce the risk of frost around the base of the plant. So even if something happens to the top of the plant, you've still got that protective base, which can then regenerate. Now for part two, um, and this is for a friend of mine who has been asked to go to Harare in Zimbabwe uh, for a couple of days, and she was a little bit worried about the carbon footprint uh, for the sort of flight for that, uh, but she needed to do it for her job. But I said I would plant a couple of trees to sort of make up for the carbon footprint, and looking at it, on an annual basis, I should be able to get away with about five trees, to five medium-sized trees, to cover in a year, once they're mature, the carbon cost of flying from Lusaka to Harari. Uh, so the first of those today is a mulberry, uh, so this is Morris albus, I think, uh, which has clearly been grown from cutting, because you can see it's already starting to fruit, where if it was grown from seed it would not be starting to try and fruit at this age. This is going into a spot which was previously occupied by a pigeon a pea, which, as pigeon peas tend to do, as other trees came up around it, it slowly sort of gave up on life, and at about seven, eight years old, it just decided it was just going to topple over, and so it's just, you know, as you can probably see in the picture, little bits of mulch around the base of this. Uh, the pigeon pea did have a marker plant, so again we don't really need a marker in here. We are going to be putting a nice little piece of aloe cameroni, which is the hardiest aloe, so I'm not really worried about that getting a bit wet as it goes in, even though it is quite cold at the moment. Um, and a nice piece of Kalanko uh, fetchinkoi, which has got roots already. It, it, it is flowering, which isn't ideal for transplanting them, but this is a very, very tough plant, and I've transplanted it with roots, I'm not trying to get it to grow from cutting when it's in flower. So. It should do fine, and these should again spread out, but they should be quite tolerant of the amount of shade that's around here, because we've got a nice little sort of guava thicket that came up with a few philanthus and a couple of other small native trees coming up in there, um, around where the pigeon, pigeon pea was, uh, but then, yeah, now the pigeon pea is gone, I would like a tree here, and I would like something that isn't a guava to add a little bit of diversity, and I do like mulberries, and we do not have many of them, so be good to have one. And that should be everything for today, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it, and if you haven't enjoyed it, thank you for watching anyway. Please tune in again tomorrow, I will be planting something else. I have no idea what yet, but uh, we'll see.